You're listening to The Dental Guys, Strategies for Practice Management, Part 2 with Chris Mahan. This week on The Dental Guys, we bring Chris Mahan from Mahan & Associates back on the show to discuss what we should be looking for to help our practice grow and improve in 2022. John even tells us an interesting story about how he's even looking to hire people. We discuss fees and how to raise your fees, how we should be really looking at really everything in our practice right now before the end of the year. Are you talking to your employees about what's to come? Are you getting excited about 2022? Well, we are this week on The Dental Guys. When the dental guys need an infection prevention product, we turn to Kerr and their Total Care line. Kerr has been an industry leader in infection control and prevention products for years. And when we think of infection control, cavicide and cavi wipes are the first things that come out of our minds. It's automatic and there's a reason for that. Kerr knows dentistry and their products work. The dental guys trust Kerr products in our offices and you should too. Stay safe with Kerr Total Care. Looking for a lab that understands the bridge between art and science? Check out the Dental Crafters Network. Dental Crafters, one relationship, infinite possibilities. Contact them at 1-800-472-8302 or at dentalcrafters.net. Do you want to learn to predictably place and restore dental implants using the most modern science and technology? We are talking 60 hours of CE in a comprehensive curriculum and live surgical implant placement on pre-selected patients. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com to learn more today. And welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. John, as we discussed in the previous show, The Dental Guys do exist. We are just a little bit um, hampered by things that are... kind of super important, right? Like our practices, our families, things like that. And we, you all know, right? And John, you're going to get to what you're dealing with right now, which is awesome because it's opportunity for, for growth and development. But my growth and development comes in the, in the way of, Hey, doubling your square footage, building a building, like right. My own brick and mortar business, right? (laughs) Own land, going vertical, right? And right now it's crazy, right? Every day I walk down because I can walk to um, the uh, the location. It's about a thousand feet from where I'm at right now, which is awesome, right? I can walk down there and I'm taking a picture every single day. And um, just to kind of show a quick pic of what, where it looked, where it was uh, kind of at the end of last week there, you can see it on the screen of, Hey, Hey, listen, like stop the leaf blowers right now, right? And pull mm-hmm. over and go to the YouTube channel and check out the the development, right? As of like sometime in October, November of uh, the dental practice right there. And so we're super pumped about it. Um, it's going to be awesome. And But a lot is going on there. And I'm thankful for project manager, John. That's one of the things that I did that I think that has been key to keep me sane in the whole process is that I have somebody that works for me that represents me. And so mm-hmm. like, I'm telling you right now, it's a game changer because I think yeah. he spent the better part of the afternoon on the phone talking with like the next door neighbor's lawyer over some utility <laughs> stuff that they're trying to work out. And guess what I'm doing, right? I'm setting back and enjoying my family and I got off at two today. And then we went and did some things, some errands and, and all that, and um, I had a good clinical day and placed implants today and just did all the things that keep, really, the ship going from a clinical standpoint. And Mm -hmm. one thing that I've learned about this is that if you ever do this, is that hire a project manager that represents you. It's a fantastic investment. And, John, uh, that's what's going on. Right. In West the Dental Guys world right now, our projected completion date is end of February 1st of March of uh, 2022. And so, yeah, 
Uh, John, what's been going on in your life? Well, I am in kind of a kind of exciting, and it's like it's it's a little crazy. I've been through everything now, from <laughs> being an associate. Everything. Well, everything now from the standpoint of, you know, being an associate um, for several years, uh, buying a practice, working with the person who I, you know, was the owner and then became the associate. And now I was the owner and it was, then I, you know, had to, uh, hired a new associate. Um, and now I'm in the process. And, and that was a different transition because it was kind of unexpected uh, mm. back in the day when I had to find somebody, um, this was where I'm at now. It's kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a time where we're looking for somebody. We're looking for the right person as a new associate dentist. And, you know, I've, I've the practice in the time that I have, um, owned it, uh, over the last few years. Um, it's just been, it's been super cool to watch the, the, uh, progression. And, mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm at a point where, you know, um, I'm, I'm looking for somebody to step into a role as an associate dentist into, you know, an already established, uh, you know, two doctor practice and be ready to, to rock and roll. And so I'm looking for the right person. And it's, a, it's, a, it's always one of those times where you're like, you know, there's, there's stresses with it where you're like, all right, I got to make sure like I kind of keep things rolling. I've got some people that have stepped up to the plate to, you know, be able to, to kind of help me through the transition time uh, and keep things rolling, but then it's also the excitement of being able to to find that that right fit um, that you can grow with and you can mentor potentially if that's what they need um, and uh, kind of move into the next the next phase of of practice growth. And you know, I'm in a different place in life, a uh, different place in my practice in a lot of good ways. Um, just, I, I feel I'm in a good place. Um, and, and the practice is in a good place. we got good people, great patients. And so, you know, it's, it's I, now, you know, I mean, if you know, if you've known me, you know me long enough and Wes and I are both wired similarly in this way. It's one of the reasons we get along and why this podcast works is that I always look at things as opportunities. And I really, really do believe in that. And, um, not everybody does, you know, I've kind of learned that like, man, there's so many people that just see, uh, you know, the potential problems. And I just have always believed that, you know, if you, if you focus on what's possible, um, and you have good people around you that you're going to be better. So if you know, somebody good who wants to, you know, come to East Tennessee and, 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 um, you know, be a part of something, maybe, you know, give us a shout out and see, see, we'll see what happens. So I'm kind of in crazy mode a little bit right now. Because to kind of hold down the fort with, you know, a two doctor practice through this transition, I'm having to expand my hours. I've got people coming in and helping, and I've done this before. Wes was a yep. part of that. He kind of helped me out years ago when person I indirectly was I'm my to help associate. You out now, <laughs> I know, I know. The person that that was the associate before got sick. This was years ago, and Wes came and graciously helped me to, you know, kind of get through my transition that time and. You know, we've got people helping today too. And uh, so it's pretty awesome to have, be surrounded by people who want to see you be successful. And anyway, so it's just a different phase. We're always in different phases and business cycles. And yeah. it's funny because, you know, the team, this is the first time like a lot of my team has ever been through a transition. Yeah, with, so, your, with your kind of like vision and, yes. you know, I, I yeah, where it, I've kind of been able to like, you know, be the one who sort of guided some of this. Mm. And so they're like, oh my gosh, like it's different. It's crazy. It's changing. You know, people are moving on and I'm like, that's part of life. You know, it's part of life and it's a business cycle. And so you kind of have to be able to rally your troops and go, Hey, you know, this is just normal and it's mm. fine. As long as we're doing things the right way, you know, the right person seems to always come along. So I think anyway. it's exciting. I'm excited for yeah. you, man. And, um, yeah, you know, uh, the journey is never dull. You know, mm. and and really, sure. as Kevin Quishan likes to talk about, is joy and happiness, and that's one of the things that uh, we'll hear him talk about on our next show. That'll be after this show's released. Kevin will come on the show and talk about uh, finding an associate, maybe, and what are some of the 
ins and outs of that. That's a show coming up right after this show, uh, so stay tuned for that one. But, you know, last last time we joined us, we brought Chris Mahan on from Mahan & Associates, and this just happens to be part two of a two-parter. In the first part, we discussed uh, some things regarding end-of-the-year strategies, right, to help reduce um, your tax uh, liability and actually put more money in your pocket by really just using the playbook that's been written and wrote out for you. You just got to hire the right people to decipher it. But tonight yep. uh, or today, we're going to talk more about really the practice management side and what opportunities we have as we transition from 2021 into 2022. So we're going to bring Chris on the show right after this message from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Justin Goodbrand with Financially Simple. So perhaps you're considering buying your first practice or your second, third, or fourth. Here's a tip for you. Chances are you carry some form of malpractice insurance, but did you know there are seven different types of insurances that you must carry to properly protect you and your practice from the inevitable risks that come from owning a business? Equally important, though, is having enough of each type of coverage. The last thing you need is to find yourself in litigation only being covered for a $100,000 benefit on a potential $250,000 claim. Ensure the amount of insurance you carry on your practice will help you stand up to the risk. For more information about this and other dental-related topics, visit financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbreath is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information. All right, and we are back. And as you mentioned, this is part two of a two-part series on end-of-year planning and 2022 planning. And we are back with Chris Mahan of Mahan Associates. Welcome back, Chris, to the show. It's been awesome to get to hear your opinions on 2022. You doing all right tonight? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me back. I always enjoy uh, masterminding with you guys. Yes, absolutely. We do as well. Last episode, we talked a lot about tax strategy, tax planning, the difference between a tax preparer and a tax strategist, which I like that. I want to focus now on, you know, I think as dentists, I think I can make this statement and not sound too negative. I meet so many dentists who are so focused on how they can save money on little things like cotton rolls or something. You know, they're like, I'm going to, I'm going to get the best, I don't get the best freaking price on cotton rolls. You wouldn't believe it, you know? And, and I they want look, the and best they two by twos out there, whether regardless by the well, ones that I mean, fall no, apart. I'm talking guys who are like, I don't care if it's the worst cotton roll in the world. No, I know what you're saying. Less. But not, I only want drive the best. Past, they drive 27 miles out of the road to pay two cents less per gallon, right? Yeah. On their gas, but they just spent $10 in gas to get there. But oh that's a whole gosh. other topic. But it's related because I think dentists have this issue sometimes of we're short sighted. We well, no, want to cheap save skates. money. Ch yes, we're cheap, cheap skates. skates. We want to save money by doing things like, say, supplies or labs. But we we lose sight sometimes of the fact that in in the scheme of things, in your overall profitability model, I'll call it that, that's minimal compared to increasing revenue, increasing yes. per, you know things on the other side. Now there's still very good things to be said for reducing costs. So I want to, we'll cover that. But Chris, I want you to talk a little bit about some of the things you think about as we're pre preparing for 2022 that you're talking to, to your clients about, or that you would talk to doctors about in general, about how to prepare for next year, looking at both sides of that, which sides matter the most? What are some strategies you're going to be talking to people about? Gotcha. And one thing I wanted to hop in on your intro regarding associates, right? Again, I always say this out there whenever I'm talking to the D4s at dental schools, you know, I'm like, it's not about the per the percentage of production or the percentage of adjusted production or collections. It's about, does that office have the work for you to do? Mm -hmm. All too many times there's a lot of really, really good successful practices and the doctor just wakes up and says, I was at a seminar. I want an associate. I'm like, 
they haven't even ran statistical numbers. Is that patient base growing or is it contracting? There's a lot of times practices top line revenue are increasing and their active patient count is diminishing because nobody watches that back door. Remember when we've done those mm. analysis guys? And, I, and oh, that's yeah. one of the things I talk about now is watch the back door. Those are new patients waiting on you that already know you, right? But so yep. many people are focused on new patients and then they want to go get an associate. The associate comes in and says, the doctor won't give me any of his patients and oh, I'm not doing anything all day. And then next thing you know, and I'm like, man, associate land out there, guys and girls, if you can get a practice that's stacked and ready to come in with technology, expertise, and it's growing, you're going to make two and a half times more money than if you went with the bells and whistle and the flashy lights of the doctor that has the land cruiser and the, you know, and the, and, and flies airplanes on the weekends. Because I don't know what it yep. is about doctors, but they like to fly airplanes for some crazy Dude, reason. But, this is so <laughs> good. Like we have to you have just, no idea. This is hilarious. Okay. That is hilarious. Okay. First of all, everything you say is so true, right? It, yep. If I was an associate, I would be looking for somebody that is look that has been like pushing, right? Pushing so hard. The best investment that you can make as an owner is in your business, right? Now, if you show up as an associate and you're like Chris says, "Hey, oh, how's this? How successful is?" This dentist, oh, he's, this is the associate talking. Oh, he's real successful. He flies airplanes on the weekends. He drives all these nice cars. You should see his house. Well, he hasn't really been investing in his business, you know? And the best investment you can make if you're looking to grow, right? Unless you're just looking to get out altogether, right? As an owner doctor is your business. And um, I can speak firsthand to this. Chris, you know it, is that, dude, I remember when Chris walked in my office and he said this, he said, Justin was sitting there and then I was sitting in there and he walks in. He was like, Oh, I feel like I'm like uh, jumping on a train. that's going like 150 miles per hour. And like, we just got to get caught up, you know, like it's going down the track. Right. And that's the type of practice that an associate really needs to be looking for is somebody that's like driving and they're driving so hard and they're investing in their practice. I'm excited about that. That was great. And um, John, you're going to have to bring it back in because I just got off on that soapbox <laughs> that Chris was on. Well, I no, it's a good discussion because when you start to talk about associates and you start to talk about where the practice is going, you know, and all I'm going to comment on that and just to say, you know, uh, it's so true. I mean, we, we see a lot of young doctors and I'm talking this, yes, as somebody who is looking for the right person, but you know, it's to me, it's, it's not about, you know, the, the, so much the quote unquote flashiness or what you, what you outwardly show, but it's about the fundamentals of the practice, you know, yeah. and, and if you want to be mentored, whether that's, you want to become a partner, you want to become an owner, you just want to be an associate, whatever it is, you know, just have to decide what kind of doctor you want to be. And yeah. I think that there's uh, you know, there's so many opportunities in practices that are on the growth curve upward. So, so, so let's, yeah, let's bring it back to thinking about mm -hmm. what are some of the things, no, it's all good stuff. It was so I mean, good. I mean, that's what it's all about, man. I mean, that's the thing. That's what I believe in, you know, I mean, that's, that's what I believe in, but I think you have to, to think about this next year and you know, what are some of the mistakes? Let me maybe start it this way, Chris, what are some of the mistakes that doctors make when they start to talk about this whole idea of saving money versus spending money? Let's talk about fees. Let's talk about hiring. You know, what are some of the things you're talking the most with with doctors about these days on on what to what to kind of think about for planning for 2022 outside of just the tax plays? Right. I, I pick up. You know what, what I gather from what you were mentioning earlier. I think you could say penny wise and pound foolish. Right. Like you mm -hmm. said, they'll drive 20 miles to save three cents on you know, a gallon of gas. Right. Um, so that is something that. You got two value propositions in business and in life, right? There's time and money, right? I mean, and love, but we'll put love aside. So time and money, and they're, they're very much interrelated. So you don't want to spend eight hours a week, you know, price shopping between Darby and Safco and Amazon. And, oh, my God, I saved 30 cents, a, you know, a bundle over here. Um, you know, you want to get people to get into 
the high valuable time utilization that's going to return multiples of money. You know, Stephen Covey in the seven habits of highly effective people, that would be his quadrant too. Saying, and that's where people need to be living right now. If you want to have the best, most epic year of your practice career in 2022, I tell you this, it's waiting on you to do it. The universe is waiting. Your practice is waiting. Your patients are waiting for 2022 to be your very best year clinically, professionally, financially, et cetera. But so what they need to do right now is write a plan of action. You know, failure to plan is planning to fail, right? What is their plan? What are their objectives? What do they want to improve in their practice operations that are going to get them to those, those levels? Whether those levels are more time off, whether those levels are a bottom line profit margin that they want to double. Well, if they want to double it, let's, let's use that BHAG, as Jim Collins says in Good to Great, that big, huge, audacious goal. Let's make a big hag because you know what? It's funny how sometimes you can have a B hag. Guess what, guys? I hit my B hag this year, right? And again, we had a B hag. It was actually a two. It's been for two years because we missed it so bad the first year. But you hit it. You know, you put those goals and objectives out there, and you de- de- develop a plan to to realizing them, and then that plan is everything you do, right? Um, and so right now is a great, great opportunity in dental practices. You know. Right now, with everybody's eyes closed, if they're not using an independent, locally geozip based fee schedule analysis to change their fees, they're not going to be anywhere close to market. But I think every one of us, you know, in the world can look at the price of energy and the price of gas today when I'm dropping a hundred bucks in the Durango to go to Knoxville. You know, I'm like, man, I, I liked it a lot better when I was 65, but, uh, but it's not. So the cost of everything has dramatically changed. And just like they were saying right now, they're like, oh, we're in infl- inflationary markets and, you know, they'll, they'll pass it down to the consumers. Well, they will. And your vendors are already passing it down to you. Uh, the, mm. the, the, the virtual meeting I was on today, the today earlier, right before this meeting, client was in there looking at the price of sensors. He had bought sensors, you know, last year, same make and model, a little bit different price on them nowadays. So everybody needs to be looking at their fee schedule and they need to point their calendar for October of every year and have recurring meeting recurring. Yeah, that that's so good. Um, this year um, we adopted uh, because fees were changing. Um, we progressively changed our fees um, based on uh, overheads and um, like, you know, that was, we started doing that um, in February of this year, and we started with our dental lab. Chris, as you know, the in a type of practice we have, a, a lab bill can add up really quickly, and mm-hmm. that's one of the biggest areas that on your P&L that you can really mess up on and get behind. Um, been there, and it's not fun. And so if you're not calling like your vendors or, you know, these like your labs and some of the, Chris, talk to that, right? Talk to like can having someone that's proactively going after this and what that looks like. Sure. Um, and again, and I really applaud you for looking at your fee schedule and specifically your service mix and the cost for you at your practice to do something. What call then what warrants that price? Cause I'll give you an example. I've got my oral B or your Phillips reps that come in and say, man, I've got the new toothbrush and, or I got the new, you know, the new water pick or whatever the case may be. And they'll say, we're going to sell it to you for 25 and it retail is really great for 50. And I'm like, Hey man, Hey, I'll buy whatever I want to retail from you, Crest, Oral-B, Phillips, Sonic Air. I'll buy whatever I want, but I'm going to price it for what I want to, to make a profit margin. And they'll say, Oh man, there's no way you can price price it at that. And I'm like, you bet I'm going to take everything times 3.2 times cost because I got to pay the, I got to pay the rent. I got to pay the electric the utilities. And so I really applaud you for taking that type of approach to make sure you get your pricing correct. Um, there's a show called the profit with Marcus Lemonis. He goes in and helps, you know, struggling businesses. He also owns like camping world and some other things, really successful guy. Um, and it says it's three P's people, pricing and processes. Right. So it's about hitting the bread and butter dentistry and doing it highly efficiently with technology and those types of things. 
Those are the type of investments we talked about on the prior meeting, uh, the previous podcast about tax savings. If you can find a piece of equipment that opens up more time for you to do other stuff, that's what you need to do. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, so that that's something, I mean, you know, and uh, if you can find something that makes you, you make your prices correct and you have a good team, you can check the box on the three P's and you're good to go. Um, so, again, I highly applaud you for doing that and looking at the cost of everything. Now, you talk about labs and how you manage that cost, right, or and along with other costs. You know how many people don't that go through life and just don't ask, right? Mm. If your labs are high, then you need to they need to call and say, "Hey, man, can you do any better?" My accountant Chris and every lab t- company in North America hates Chris, right? They're like, "God, oh, Mayhan, you got you hired Mayhan. He's telling you to get them down, okay?" And then they give you the same price they're giving some of their larger DSO clients. You say, "Ah, oh, I didn't even know that was out there." Like BioHorizons, mm. you've seen where those multiples come in. I can take a, a, a GP that's doing, you know, I don't know, 100 implants a year, and I can get their pricing model against somebody that's doing 1,000, and I'd be like, well, look at the difference there. And I get it. That's business, right? But a lot of times you just got to ask, because how many of these kids go out of school and they use, leave University of Kentucky or University of Louisville or UN, UT Memphis or UAB, and they go work at Affordable Dentures, guess which price they get to pay when they go open their de novo practice? The yeah. same price been extended to affordable dentures. Exactly. So those are things. Exactly. That, so those are things you can ask, you know, for them to do for you. Um, is just asking, and then also if you're tracking, you know, again, you talk about you know your office in highly aesthetic, you know, restorative offices. You know, the industry average is fifteen percent, been fifteen percent forever on clinical supplies, sundries, and labs, fifteen percent of revenues. So if you do a million dollars a year, you're going to spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars on sundries and. But another thing is, but a lot of practices have incorporated even orthodontists a lot as well with Invisalign, right? So they got the mm-hmm. line technologies. They go get the Itero, and 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 it's no secret Invisalign makes a good profit margin. <laughs> they tag you on the labs, but doctors are like, dude, I don't have to touch it. My assistants take care of the whole thing, so I don't care if I'm only making a you know forty percent gross profit margin on it. I don't have to do anything. So that can sometimes skew my numbers. We're searching for too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's just get kind of get down to brass tacks. Then if you've got somebody who says, Hey, what should I do about fees? Right. Cause we kind of touched on that just briefly. Like what is the order of things you tell somebody, right? Because, you know, do you just blanket increase fees? Do you, do you look at these services about fees? You know, cause I think that's a, that's an interesting discussion that people have. And there's lots of different opinions on that. How do you advise somebody to evaluate their fees, especially given that we've got the potential for inflation or the discussion of inflation and consumer price index going up? What do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, we, we absolutely have inflation. You know, you had some in Washington three months ago saying it's transitory inflation. And now they're going, OK, no, it's not transitory, but wages are going to increase. So guess what that mm. means, everybody listening to this show? Guess who all is going to be knocking on your door come January, February, March? Every single one of your staff members going, hey, I need a raise. Electric's up. Gas is up. I paid more for my turkey this year. I need more money. And that's when you need to have a comprehensive benefit analysis done for your staff so you can show them that even though your friend Jane down the road for Dr. Smith says she's making three dollars more an hour, does Dr. Smith have the same PTO system that you have? Does Dr. Smith have a 401k profit sharing plan like you have? Does Dr. Smith give health insurance allowance like you do? You know, so you got to make sure you are ready to go. So when they hit you up at your busiest time on your most stressful day at the water cooler with a tear coming down an eye that you're ready to be able to appropriately address this, but that's going to come into your fee, um, the need for a fee analysis right now, because I promise uh, those pinned down at the water coolers with the Kleenex moments are coming at you. And if you're not prepared to to show them how much benefit you give them in terms of holiday, PTO, um, health insurance, profit sharing, and they say, oh, wow, I actually make $2 more than an hour than my friend down the road. Yeah, see, there you go. Now let's talk about how we can get additional earned income and bring in bonus systems or some of those things. But back to, I kind of spun out of there. So the fees, again, like I said, mark every October, November on your calendar for the rest of your life at a minimum, right? Use a third party. A lot of your Patterson or Shine reps have the fee analysis and they'll give it to you for free 
for your GeoZip. And then if you want to sit down and kind of cross compare and do it, um, firms like myself and other ones out there, I'll do a customized fee analysis and an impact analysis for our clients where they see what the standard uh, percentiles are, 50th, 75th, 85th, 95th percentile. As claims are submitted, we partner with Optum, which you know is the largest data claim subscriber in the world. And so we actually know. So it's not our buddies at our study club going, hey, man, what do you, st- what do you charge for a crown? What do you charge for this? Because nobody's going to tell you the truth, right? They're gonna, you know, they're, or they don't even know. They're just going to say a number because they're just like, you know. Um, but that being said is get a third party objective data and sit down like Wes is doing with your team, your office coordinator, team lead, and say, hey, we're doing lunch for the next two days. I'll bring in pizza, but we're going to look at this and we're going to make our fee changes and have an objective mm-hmm. mindset to it. If you don't do that, right, you get behind real quick. And, um, you know, every year we adjusted fees, right? And and what we did is we, we, we bought into some fee, right, book or some type of system, right, where you hire somebody. Um, I've even hired Chris before to do it. And, uh, and one of the things, too, about hiring a third party is you always miss something when you're doing it yourself, right? So it's good to kind of have that third party. And I want to kind of come back and just make a comment on the, uh, you know, the, the team that's going to be crying because inflation and they're going to need more money in their pocket. And then you're going to be able to remind them, hey, they are well compensated for because if, Chris, one of the things that you do well is you look at the P&L and you look at what percentage, right, of your um, collections, right, is occupied, right, by your team, right? And if you're too low, right, expect tears, right? But you should be in a range, Chris, depending on the type of practice that you're in, Maybe you can speak to that because that could be an indicator. One, maybe you don't have enough to grow or maybe you're just lucking out, right? But most of the time, if you're, if you're low, then you may, you may start getting more tears, right? And you may lose people, right? Talk to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. If you're low, then there, that could be a, asymptomatic of, you know, not reinvesting in your team or not paying your team enough. And, Again, your team, I would I didn't mean to be, you know, nonchalant earlier. I was being kind of I thought trying to be funny a little bit. Um, but your team is your most valuable asset. I think everybody can agree to that. Your team members and your team, and you want to make sure that you give them a great opportunity and a great life. Um, but you also want to keep those ranges where you want them and make and if, if I see a practice that's really low, I'll say, Hey, you know, are you taking care of them? Because if you see one that's really low, um, a lot of times you'll see an attrition problem. People won't stay. Um, and then on the other side of it, like John, I mean, again, we've been come through and when people buy practices and their percentage of revenues is occupied by a high, a high percentage for staff, because you got, you know, you've in, inherited the three hygienists that have been there for 20 plus years who got the do, you know, dollar a year annual raise. And now they make $56 yep. an hour each. And you're like, whoa, how do we do that? Then you got to really ha- have yep. a head scratcher, you know, kind of thing. Yep, exactly. So there's a fine line, I think, with all this stuff. And you got to be able to look at that. But if you're going to, and I, you know, one of the things I'm a believer in, <clears throat> and obviously, there's no perfect way to compensate people. But I think if you can somehow, you know, connect the performance of the practice to what people make, you know, and I think that if you're saying, hey, we're increasing fees by whatever percentage that is, and here's how that benefits you directly, then I think it creates uh, a, owner, a little bit more of an ownership mentality as best as you can where somebody says, I mean, we did this, we sat down with hygienists a few months ago and we said, look, just so you understand how your bonus is calculated, here's how it's calculated. And here's what a 5% fee increase translates to in your hourly rate. And I literally walked through the math and I gave them real numbers real numbers from their pay from the last six months didn't, didn't give them any names. You know, we had four hygienists. I sat down and said, here's, you know, here's scenario one, you know, you did this, you worked this many hours, you produced this much. Here's your percentage of bonus. Here's how much more. Now, what does that equate to dollars per hour? Right? So here's your effective hourly rate before your 401k. And here it is after. And 
Now, what would it look like if we raised fees 5% and you did the exact same procedures, right, next year at 5% higher? Here's what you would make per hour. And what it translated to with us, and everybody's different, but it translated roughly to somewhere around 3% increase in fees was about a dollar an hour raise. Given the same production, given the same procedures, if you didn't do anything differently this year to next year, I raised my fees 3%, you do the same thing, you make a dollar more per hour. And that was like, oh, so what you're saying is if you raise fees every three every year at 3%, I'm getting a dollar an hour raise. And that's powerful when it comes to the discussion with somebody where they actually understand there's a connection between the fees that you're proposing and their actual compensation. So I think some type of you know, laying that out for them is very important. What do you think, Chris, talk about the hiring environment right now. Yeah. Because, you know, it's <laughs> funny because I thought it was just because I was in a small town. And then I talked no. to Wes and he's like, nope, because he's in a pretty good sized city. We're You're struggling. in an even bigger city, Chris. What's the situation with hiring? What do we do about it? Do we just have to pay everybody $75 an hour in order to get people or... You know, what do we have to do? What's What are some things you're talking to, to doctors about as far as how to get good people, how to get people at all? Hmm. Man, it has been such a challenge. I mean, it, it has been so hard when you got, what is it, was 10 to 15% of hygienists just dropped out of the job market entirely, like new career path, right? Yeah. And that's so crazy because it was just three years ago, dental hygienist was voted best job in America. Four days a week, scrubs, make great money. And then 15% of them just drop off the planet and go work at, you know, wherever. Um, it, it, that, that's been crazy. Hey, let and me yeah. interrupt you just for a second on that. Do you think that that was like the holdouts, right? I mean, like I know there's the anomaly, but has there been any like, you know, data on that? Has it... Is it the holdouts that were like holding on the 60 plus year old hygienists, maybe in their upper 50s even, that have practiced for 30 some years? I mean, what have you heard anything? Is it is there any metrics to this? No, my, my, my assumption would be probably, you know, take it. I come from, you know, accounting background and tax, which we're just a self loathing profession anyway. Um, but I think that are probably that's probably about a fair estimate of people that just weren't happy at all in their in their job, you know, any longer for whatever reason. And I think that COVID and you know the the dental environment and you know with COVID really have a lot of anxieties for anybody. I think that it just pushed a lot of hygienists to kind of go if that were probably on the fence already, just to go ahead and make that change. Now you know one could argue that give it another. 12, 18, 24 months, and a lot of them will be back in the market because you can't make the same amount of money at Ross or TJ Maxx um, as you can do a dental hygiene. So, yeah, or the, or the real estate market like goes back to normal or something yeah, in some yeah, areas. Everybody's of the a real estate agent nowadays, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's 2006. Oh, yeah. 06, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh six. Everybody that hits close to home. Actually, everybody had their real estate license. I got mine right here. Let me show you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So are you uh, are you yeah. finding the same thing we're seeing? I mean, you're in a big you're in a big town, and and um, you know I'm in a you know mid sized town, and John's in a smaller town. Uh, but it seems like across the board, like we're having a problem finding assistance. Um, any, really anybody hygienist uh, especially hygienist what's your thoughts what's some creative ways I, right to attract people right it's hard man and here's the the, the and it opens up a whole nother pandora's box of challenges i feel like the job market is getting better than it was now it's still nowhere where you know we can put an ad out and have four interviews by friday right but I do feel like it's gotten better a little bit. I think people are starting to return back to work. I think it's starting to feel a little bit normal again, right? And I think that you can, you'll can you start to see those resumes on your dental peeps and your dental posts and all that stuff start to pop back up. And you'll start getting front office assistance, hygiene will start slowly coming back. But here's the problem is supply and demand. So once you do get the resume, 
and you're hiring a dent, you need a dental assistant and they're coming out of Remington and they're like, yeah, man, I was number one, you know, number three in the class. And you know, they got a personality and they're going to look professional and you're going to say, okay, how much you want? And they're going to say $23 an hour. And you're going to go, well, wait, what, what? And then that opens up a whole other problem. If you've got three on staff that have been there for five years and they're all making 19, 20 and $21 an hour. And if you want to grow your practice by that next part of your long-term plan for 2022 and make your number, you know, you have to have that third, that fourth assistant, right? I'm just, then what are you going to do? And you can't get nobody. So then you have to bring in 30, $23 an hour. And then buddy, I better, you better guarantee all those ladies that aren't making 23 an hour. Trust me. It's the, it's the unwritten golden rule. Everybody knows what everybody makes. You can't say this is confidential. Don't talk about it. They all talk about it. They all know what everybody makes, right? Just go on that assumption. So then what did you do? You just went up $23 an hour plus $3 more an hour. Well, no, it's like, what's that? Set like $6 an hour getting everybody else up to 23. So then how's that deal with your percentages, right? And it's just a Pandora's box. Now, what I like to do, and you know, talk about what I would be doing for next year. And you mentioned some of it too, Wes is man, I am, a, what I dream about outside of saving taxes for people, well, you know, amassing piles of wealth with tax savings is having insane, fun, awesome incentive plans for the teams. Mm -hmm. And so I look, I'm hiring a girl that started Monday. I met her last week. You know, she was wanting X dollars an hour. I said, I can't give you more an hour because I've got a set hourly that I pay all my staff for this position. I said, but what I will do is I guarantee you with my incentive plan, if you're as good as you say you are, because I know the rest of this team is, right? You're going to bonus. And I can guarantee you for the first 90 days, if you don't make through the bonus on top of it, I'll true you up at a certain dollar amount. And then after 90 days, if they're not bonusing, then I can make the decision to cut them loose or not. And then I hadn't mm -hmm. broke my system. I hadn't broke my chassis, right? I'm like, That's good. Everybody, still get, everybody still gets the same hourly amount. But we come in with, you know, these insane, fun, competitive incentive plans, which, I mean, that's what I like to wake up in the morning thinking, man, what's the next incentive plan that I can put in play? Yeah. Next year, if you're expecting uh, significant growth. <laughs> <laughs> like you're doubling your office or something. Yeah. Asking for a friend. Right. I'm asking for a friend <laughs> that's expecting <laughs> significant growth. Um, and we know that you know, there's going to be a couple more hires right now. We're we actually, we're hoping fingers crossed that this working interview Thursday is going to work out for an assistant. So that's great. But, uh, thinking about hygiene or, you know, some of those, um, you know, really key provider areas. I mean, everybody's important in my practice. I mean, I'm not trying to take away from any one area, but like at some point, right, we're going to need to start looking and, I, and it's really hard to prepare for this. Um, and so, you know, how long do you look in advance? Have you ever kind of said, I'm going to bring you on even though we're not ready for you and pay you X dollar amount to work certain areas in the office? I mean, I think really as creative as I can get, to capture that personality and that person that fits my team. I mean, if we can predict that six months from X date, we're going to need a body filling a chair, you know, doing this particular thing that if I might start looking that far in advance, is that uncommon? And if you found them, just find something for them to do in the practice, John, you're smiling, but I mean, like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. Cause I got, I got a story, but I'm gonna let Chris answer first. Absolutely. I'm hiring 24 seven for every position in any one of my companies, right? I had to let my Mayhan accounting and you know business specialist know I've got an ad out for every one of your jobs. I'm not trying to replace you. I've got an ad out for dental hygienist, dental assistant in the front office in every suburb around Nashville. Right. And I do that and I let them know, I'm like, I've got a continuous recruiting effort. Cause that may, cause there may be that unicorn that comes out and I want to be proactive all the time and I want to be scanning them. And if you see the need Wes of an additional growth or John, as you see the need and going, Hey, 
I got, I'm, I'm going to interview so-and-so doctor and this dude's a coy maniac and he's going to come in and he's going to need three assistants or she's going to need three assistants to recognize their potential. Then man, you know, yeah. Then you're going to want to be like, dude, yes, I will go find them. And you want to, you want to start hiring. They might be starting at six well, months, but back to your statement. So yeah. I had, I don't know how patient. well that coy maniac would fit in your spear practice, John. <laughs> Hey, Spears, Coyce, and LBI dudes all started to say that. We can all hug, Panky we Dawson. can all hug and yeah. kiss. It's going to be fine. Coyce it's going to be fine. Be, yeah, whatever. I think all right, John, John is, tell me your story you because got, I know it's going to be good, Here's a story. John. We'll, say, we'll segue boat, toward the, the end boat. of this episode, but I will say this. So I had a patient, just a, just a little, <laughs> you know, had a patient who really liked our practice, and she was grew up in it. And, you know, here I'm in small town, right? So this is how small towns work, all right? So just bear with me. So she grew up in the practice, good girl, uh, really, really nice, grew into a really, really nice lady, just sweet and, and understands how to talk to people, right? You understand what I mean? Like some people have it and some people don't. And in my opinion, you can't train it. You just can't train it. You either know how to talk to people or you don't. I think you learn it when you're about eight, Okay, so that's just my opinion. So she grew up in the practice. She loved it. She decided she wanted to go to dental assisting school as a result of somewhat being in our practice. She, she wanted it bad. So she went to school in 2019. She finished the end of 2019. She wanted to do a internship in our practice to get her experiential hours in 2020 and COVID hit. So she couldn't do her hours. Okay, so she went to work at a retail store. She worked there for six months, never, ever, ever even applied anywhere else except my practice. And after, right after COVID, she applied. I mean, you know how it was right after COVID. All we were doing is working 172 hours a day, trying to keep up, trying to just get back to where we were, you know, before and see all these patients. I had no time to hire anybody. I was, I was working so hard. So fast forward, right? Here we are. I'm looking for a new associate. It's time. She enters back into the practice. She's like, <laughs> this is a true story, man. I mean, she literally calls us up. Hey, I've been working. I'm now the manager at this retail store. She's like, but if you are looking for somebody, I just want to let you know I'm looking. Now, I don't have a doctor yet, okay? Like, I don't have a doctor. I mean, I'm looking. It's, I mean, I'm looking for like two weeks, okay? So it's not like I've been looking for a long time. I'm looking for two weeks, but I don't have a doctor. Here she is. She's like, I've never applied anywhere else except your practice because I want to be in just your practice with your people. And she's like, so if you want, I just want to let you know I'm out there. If you ever want, I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to hire this person. I'm going to hire them. I'm going to put them in a position, doing as much as I can, training them, getting them ready for the time when the right person comes along because how often do you have somebody who at a relatively young age is like, Hey, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of what you're trying to do, you know? And so that's the unicorn. Uh -huh. Now we'll see, right? We'll see if that is the unicorn, but I believe it is. How often do you find these people? So, you know, a year and a half ago, I would never have been having these conversations. I would have been like, Oh, you know, so many people out there you choose, you get people, you train them. It's fine. We got good systems. We train people. And that's how I've always done it. But it is a change now, Wes. I mean, and Chris, it's a change for me. And I think it's a change for you, Wes. I know it is. Where you're like, if you find somebody who has potential, man, you better get them. And you better bank them. And you better pay them well, even if it hurts a little bit. Because in my opinion, like, this is the world we're living in right now. You, you know, and, and training somebody... There's no price you can put on the value of somebody who cares because, gosh, how, I mean, you talk to people in factories, retail, food. I mean, they can't even, I'm talking to a Chick-fil-A manager. I know I'm ranting. That's okay. No, go on, man, but this is good. This is good. I was it, talking brother. to Preach the manager of Chick-fil-A in my little town. Okay, we, we got a Chick-fil-A in my little town. It was like, it was like, it was like a come to Jesus moment when, when Chick-fil-A opened in, in my little town, it was like, we finally made it. Okay. So we felt like we finally made it. And I know the, the manager operator, owner operator, whatever you want to call it, super nice guy. 
He's a patient, and we were talking about this. And he's like, yeah, I mean, he's like, Chick-fil-A has certain hiring criteria that we have to abide by. He's like, you know what? I have been working for Chick-fil-A. He's like, you know how many people it takes for the small town Chick-fil-A to work properly? 75 people on on staff. I'm like, what? 70? That's a lot for one Chick-fil-A store to operate in a small town. <laughs> he's like, yeah, we need 75 people. So he's like, we can't find more than 50. We don't have more than 50. He's like, we, we would... We would He's like, so we've increased our wages. Didn't help. We've done this. Didn't help. Didn't it? So he's like, you know what I'm doing now? I'm hiring people who are really below the standard of Chick-fil-A. And then I'm having to hope that I can train them. And if it doesn't work out, I just fire them. He's like, and I hope I can find somebody. He's like, I might hire 10 people and there might be one that has potential to really become like a long-term employee. And he's like, we have pretty high standards at Chick-fil-A. And he's like, we're really struggling to just find one out of 10. And then you talk to factories, they're, they're like one out of 100. You know, it, it's just, it, I feel like it's a different world right now. So I'm, I'm of the mindset of just, like you said, Chris, always be, I mean, I've always been hiring. I mean, people say that though. They say mm-hmm. that. Do they mm-hmm. really mean it? I mean, a dentist out there listening to the show, do you really mean that? You'll always be hiring, right? ABH, always be hiring. Come on. Are you really though? <laughs> Maybe you said that, but when you go to a restaurant, here's how I'm thinking right now. This is honest how I'm thinking. If I go to a restaurant and some young server comes to my table, she rocks it. He rocks it. Like unbelievably engaging, articulate, smart, on time, knows when the appetizer is supposed to come out to give you enough time before the main comes. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You got Dude, I've or been a major doing, D, I've or a major D this. who I've sets the schedule, this. or or somebody at a hotel who impresses you. I mean, I'm telling you, I've never done this before in my life, but I'm legitimately saying I'm giving them a card. And I'm like, hey, if you ever want a job in healthcare in my world, I would absolutely hire you based upon your performance today. So here's a card. And I'm, I've never done that in my life. I mean, Wes and I have done that in West Coast when we've been on trips. We've told people, we're like, if you were in my town, I would hire you. I'm now doing that because there's so few people who have it. And I just, I, I can't find them anymore. It's like I used to feel like they're everywhere. Now they're nowhere. I'm ranting. I'm sorry. I'm going to shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- I tell you what, it's 100% the truth. I mean, I'm excited, though, because there's a lot of opportunities right now for people to move into a great career. And um, it's it, they're far and few between when you do find them, right? It takes, um, it takes a little more training, maybe a little more massaging, and maybe you do have to go through hiring and fire. Um, but it's always been said, hire for personality, train for skill. So if you can find that person, right, it'd be amazing. Now, Chris, before we close out, okay, yep. before before we close out, I want I want to put up something that is unique to you. It is your unique model, right? Straight off of your website. I want you to talk a little bit about your what you do and why you do it because it's right here. And I pull it up here right on the screen as you're talking. Oh yeah, well basically um we're driven as a firm as, uh, to offer healthcare business services to, to any practice, uh, physicians, dentists, opto, chiro, et cetera. Um, and we believe in, you know, we want to drive change. We want to exceed the expectations. We want to be innovative and give top tier service to our clients in a, in a whole, uh, all things needed tax, tax strategy and preparation, pension plan, retirement planning, financial planning, uh, payroll and HR, financials and benchmarking, they're all together. They're all intertwined. And if you have somebody that you can be a sounding board off of, they can help you increase your top line revenues. They can help you maximize your profit by managing your expenses and budgeting and forecasting and reviewing those on a regular basis. And then you can get them to help you keep more of that money due to tax strategies. Um, that's the name of the game. It's not how much you gross or how much you make. It's how much you keep. And that's what we're in the business for our clientele. And it's, again, it's a mission that uh, keeps us up at night is trying to help the financial success of, 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 of dentists and healthcare professionals 
because uh, you guys bust it, man. Y'all worked for a long time and y'all do a lot of great things. Um, employ a lot of people. Do and, you know my job is to help keep y'all's practices thriving, help you be a resource to make your practices more successful. Again, save those tax dollars. That's a dry, That's a mission. And uh, well, eleven cent a point. And I'll tell you, know, you I mean, as a, as a not just. I mean, this is legit. I mean, Wes and I both agree on this. And anybody that knows that's this firm, and, I, and we're not being paid to say this. It's just. I mean, these this is these are people that push hard. You know, and and uh, they and, and you know you might be somebody who's pushing hard in your own practice, and that's great, and they're going to fit super well. You might be somebody who's just kind of hanging and enjoying it, and wants to save some money, and you want somebody that's going to push hard that you're not going to have to worry about. You know, they're going to do their job. They're not going to be asking you to tell them how to do their job. I've always said, you know, I want to be an expert in my field, but I want to be surrounded by people that I don't have to tell what to do. They're telling me what to do because they're mm-hmm. smarter than me. I don't ever want to be smarter than the people I hire, right? That, now, right. yeah, do your research, but find people who are smarter than you so that you can just offload that responsibility. And that's definitely what Mayhan's done for me. That's the truth. Uh, and I believe that we need to be looking at what next year holds. This is the time to be setting goals. This is the time to be figuring out what 2022 holds. Wes and I are both very different situations right now in a good way. Like I'm excited for him. I'm excited for what's coming to my practice. Chris, I'm going to let you just kind of finish it out. What are some closing comments on how is 22 going to be different than 20 and 21? What's your forecast? And then we'll close out the show. I think 22 will be a very successful year. I think that there's a lot of opportunities. And I think that the changes that practices make right now that they strategize and incorporate into their 2022 development could be a pivot year. Because I think there will be material changes happening to the economy in general over the next probably three to, you know, two to five years. And what you do now while the, while the train is, is, is ripping and running down the tracks can really set you up for how you adapt, react to any challenging markets. And that's looking at your payer mix. That's looking at your fee analysis. That's looking at your um, managed care contracts. That's looking at the right key performance in, indicators in your practice, not just setting a production goal and putting it on the wall. That's an important thing. But one of the biggest things, of, you know, as I continue my journey of learning, I've started focusing more on numbers that that you can change the behavior. How many scheduled hygiene appointments are on your schedule for December? What's your hygiene capacity? And in January, then do the look back. Too many times we set these goals and they're all kind of look back goals. Um, so I'm starting to incorporate more to look forward goals into our um, our structures. And, I th- and we've had some really tremendous results with them. So you just got to make sure you're shooting at the right targets. And I think you can set yourself up for a lot of success for many years to come. But I do think 22 is going to be a pivotal year to really set that trajectory for a lot of practices one way or another. Well, for John and Wes, uh, we'd like to thank Chris for joining the show today. It's been fantastic having somebody on there that really is bringing to the table what we should be looking forward to in the next year and the years to come as far as planning uh, for taxes, strategies um, in your practice management, um, everything from like, how, I mean, how do we, you know, hire, what are we looking for? Um, you know, what fees we should be, you know, increasing, how we should be doing that. I mean, these are just some of the things that we've just got done discussing. And, and really, I want your feedback on some of the things you'd like to hear um, us discuss in the future. I know that uh, this is valuable information for me and John as we've uh, utilized um, people like Chris for years and and employ Chris even now to take care of our own family's needs and our practice's needs. And as our practices are changing, we're looking to experts just like Chris to really bring us the high-end, next-level information that the dental guys really is accustomed to. Not only are we looking to take our clinical skills to the next level, we're looking to take our practices to the next level. And whether that's just hiring the next best person to implement whatever, you know, cool clinical strategy or idea that you're researching and developing in your practice, or whether you're looking to grow your practice by adding an associate, um, 
we need people. We need to surround ourselves with people that are greater than us, just like Dr. Brandemark always said, and you're bound to succeed. Hey, if you like what you're listening, hey, we can be found on all of the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're going to be doing some fantastic things in the coming months. It's getting close to Christmas time. And in our next episode, we can't wait to bring Kevin Quishan on to discuss, really, how to look for an associate. What should we be, what's some of the stories that Kevin brings to the table about some of his most recent things when it comes to helping others and their quest to find who fits into your practice. And we're excited again for Chris being on the show tonight. So for John, for Chris, I'm Wes, and we are the Dental Guys.